All right, before we go into substance, let's select the shoe. You're gonna file, you're gonna export selection, and you're gonna export it as an FBX or OBJ, but I'm gonna do FBX and I already did it, so it's there. Cancel. Um, and then you just go into Substance Painter, File, New. Um, you don't have to select a template, so I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to grab my OBJ that I'm using. Um, you can just go to OK, and it comes in not smooth. Um, remember, it was in through. It was in a three which smooths it in the viewport in Maya. This is what it looks like unsmoothed, which is totally fine. Um, if I wanted to smooth it in Maya, I could, but I like keeping things as low poly as possible. So this is what we've got. Um, you'll notice there's a bunch of pre-made materials here. It's super useful. And there's a bunch more online you can find if you are looking for something specific. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna drag uh, some some uh, materials that I like onto my shoe that I think will work. And it looks a little bit like Photoshop in that you have layers and stuff. So that should look familiar. You've got your viewport, um, a 3D viewport and a 2D one where you can see your uh, UVs. And to switch that, I believe you can go up here and right now it's 3D, 2D. We can go with 3D only and uh, That'll work for us. We, we don't need to see the other one. So I'm just going to drag on some, some uh, deciding which fabric I like. I searched fabric at the top. Um, and if you drag it right onto the part you want, don't worry that it, it also uh, ended up on the toruses or that those toruses are... Um, see through because we're not going to be putting material on them. So that we can just ignore. No biggie. Um, and you'll see our seam, our seam in the inside right here. That's where things aren't lining up, but that's okay. Cause it's kind of hidden. So the, once the legs in there, you won't see that. And I don't want to shoot to be black. So I'm going to change the color by going into the layer and I'm going to go down to, I could change the color of like the dirt on it and everything. Um, but I don't, know if I want to do that. I just generally want to change the base color and I want it to be blue-ish. Um, there's a lot of variation here in the fabric color and I want to tone that down um, a little. So if I go to the fill here, turn down the overlay, you could mess around with this stuff um, that's better. Okay. You could just see that the materials in substance are, are richer than just making ones ourselves, um, with the AI standard surface, uh, in Maya without like leaving Maya. Um, let's now, I'm thinking maybe a leather for this. Nah, don't love it. Um, Let's see, rubber, R-U-B-B-E-R, -E rubber tire. Ooh, and if you linger over the um, substance with the, I want kind of a, a used rubber look. Not like that, not metallic, not metallic. Plastic used might work. I'm going to go back into that, that one. It's a separate layer because it's a separate thing. And I'll change the color to another blue. I'm going to do shades of blue for the shoe, I think. Or blue and green. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, I like that, I think. Do I? <laughs> this is classic me. I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to stay away from purple. Hmm. Hmm. This is the fun part. Or I could go orange. Ooh, that could be fun. Blue and orange. What do you guys think? I 
But I was into that Shades of Blue idea. I want it... Ooh. Yeah, this can be easily changed. So I'm going to keep it with that for a second and I'm going to go back to my... Uh, actually, I'll keep it in rubber because I'm going to need the bottom to be rubber. So let's see what's like a good kind of rubbery... Some of these look just too tough. And... Uh, Sometimes going online and finding your material is better because there's so many options. Rubber tire. We're going to use rubber tire. Um, thinking about it. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Oh, no. Rubber dry. Okay, so if I want to get rid of rubber tire, I can just head on over to it and drag it. Or not drag it, but just delete and... Uh, rubber dry. Open that up. Let's see. Maybe I'm gonna tone down the wornness a little, just like Photoshop. And I'm gonna make the base um, blue or white. Let's see. Kind of want it to be classic. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. No, nope. I was messing with the normal map. Where's our base color? There we go. That's way too white. Let's go to like the blue area and then I kind of want it to be more on the gray side than, yeah. I could make the tip white also of this shoe and now that I see it, I'm kind of wanting to. But I, I want to tone down the the worn look. So I'm going to go in and, and make it a little bit less gray for these. Messing around with things here. The overlay will change the intensity of the wear and tear. So I want it to be a little worn, but not too worn. Um, I think now we're going we're gonna to have to go back to fabric. Let's see. I want kind of the same fabric for the tongue that I used for this part. And I actually, now that I'm looking at it, really like having the darker blue like that, that grayish blue for that. And I, um, okay. And I'm going to make this white, I think, uh, one. Okay. Back to rubber. I keep going back and forth. Rubber, um, rubber dry. I believe, actually, if I go to the bottom material here and close it out, I, I think I can copy and paste it onto the tip. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The question is, is that what I want? And I think the answer is yes. I don't know. I don't know for sure, but I think that makes sense. Um... Laces, we're going to need, I think I have a rope material. No, I have a really fun material that I've used in the past for laces that I think I got online, climbing rope. Um, that's It was available on the Substance website, I believe. So you can find that. And uh, it's really great because you can change all the colors on it and the scale. So I'm going to scale it down quite a bit. 
mm, it's hard to determine how much I want to scale it down. Maybe that much. And I'm going to just change the colors. I'm going to take out the purple. I like the blues. Um, hmm, I kind of like it that way. Analyzing. Yeah, I'm into it. Um, debating if I should change this blue into something else. The cool news is that you can see, you can see how it looks in advance. Ooh, don't hate that either. It's got like a richer vibe. Don't want it to be purpley. That's purple to me. It's purplish. I want like a baby blue. Yeah. I might I might up the white to match the white of um, the bottom of the shoe. Cool. All right. I think that's looking good. Checking it out from all angles. Let's file. I'm going to save uh, the entire scene. So I have my characters folder. I'm going to put it under source images. This is my project folder, by the way, for this. And project folders will create all these subfolders for you shoes and I'm also going to export all the images. So here we go to export textures from file. Make sure all of your textures are selected. Find your folder. It's in boy. I'm going to make a subfolder for shoes. Select, export. All right, let's bring them in. We have to recreate our textures one by one. So uh, a great new feature is the substance part of Maya. You can go to that uh, little tab and then head over to this three to a uh, material symbol and you can create Select multiple maps, bottom, there, oh, okay. It, it named it bottom AI standard service, I see. Took me a second there. I just wanna render it to see if it, it looks that gray when it's rendered. Not really. Um, could be whiter. I might make it whiter, but in the meantime, let's make everything else. So we're going to do the same exact thing for every part of the shoe where we're going to select multiple maps, find our next part. Oh, I didn't do all the parts for my bottom. No, I did. It creates, they create TXs, um, which is like a Maya file that it can read. That's why it looks like there are more. Rings. Oh, I don't need rings. I can skip that. I'm going to go to laces. All of the laces. Apply. Assign existing material. I think it's AI standard surface one. Okay. I'm going to rename this. Laces material. That's looking good. Re-render just to see. I definitely want to make this whiter. But that looks cool. Okay, back to this. I could probably fast forward through this part because it's the same for each thing.
Oh no, that was sides. It's the newest standard surface. So this one's not five. No, 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 no. There it is. Perfect. We'll rename this. I'm gonna have to get rid of the old materials so that I don't confuse them, but that's not a big deal. Actually, I like the color that these loops are um, with this. So I might, I, I might leave them in the long run. Okay, we're gonna finish off with the last two bits. Um, we did laces, now we got it. we'll do tip, select, apply, tip. Existing, I think it'll be, yeah, it's a little too dark. And the tongue is our last bit. Select multiple maps, go down to tongue, select, apply. Cool. All right, there we go. Um, Real quick, I'm going to lighten this. So if I go to back to my substance painter, which I haven't closed out of, I want to go to the um, tip shoe mat. I can definitely delete some of these old materials right off the bat. I'm seeing that they, I don't need them. Um, We've got this, and for the bottom, we've got this. Okay. Uh, if I open it back up, I'm going to want to test things out a little bit, seeing if I can turn things down. I'm going to make it less rough. That might help. And honestly, I'm hmm, no, not a little more metallic, less rough. Less rough. I think that will help. I'm going to copy that. And quickly, I'll save it. So I'm wondering if, if I turn the roughness down. So in substance, if I file, export textures, and I only want the bottom and tip, not laces. 
export. Did I export it to the place I wanted is the question. Taking a quick look into my, taking a quick look into source images. Okay, I think, well, I think that I didn't need to export it again, but I think it'll work. Let's see. I should just be able to. Just reconnect something and it, it might make a difference. Bottom shoe, bad base, mitt, base color. Okay, let me just see if the roughness changed. Okay, so I figured out what this rendering issue is. So if you're getting a render that looks off like this, it's distorting your um, your geometry in the only in the render. It's an issue because Maya is creating a displacement map automatically with this um, substance file. So if you just go, ah, I'll show you how to get there. So if you go to this, this is a material editor and you'll see your material and I see that there's a displacement shader. So I'm just going to click on it and I'm just going to right click over the displacement map and break that connection. So now you'll see that when I render my shoe, that fixes that one issue. And I'm going to do that with all of the things that that's affecting. So we're going to go back. Oh, I don't know why this one lost its material, but I'm also going to put the bottom back on it. Nope, that's not the one. Um, maybe it's that one. I think I need to recreate that. Sorry. Let me just collect all of those. Oops. There it is. Okay. That lost on me. All right, so uh, anything that we have that displacement shader. So I'm going to bring back that. Um, I'm going to break that. You could also break it through the nodes, but this is just easier for me. Um, I'm going to break that for anything that's distorting the image. So a hyper shade. I'm going to just scale this down so we can see it. And I think this has a displacement shader. It does. Great connection. And this has a displacement shader. And I didn't want that. So now if I render it out, I'll see. Very cool. Yeah, that's that's it. That's what I wanted. Awesome. Oh, it's so cool. Okay. So if I zoom out a little bit, see it from different angles. I kind of want him to be hidden now. 
and that's just the shoe, just the shoe of this character. But to me, like I said in one of my earlier videos, shoes are so important. I think they're like just a really integral part of a character and um, my favorite part when I do the clothing. So that is how it looks. Oh my gosh, I'm in love. It's so cool, it looks good. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna quickly save. I'm gonna select everything um, in on my deleting my history and freezing my transforms, centering the pivot, just all your go-to stuff here. And you can do that all through the edit men uh, menu and also I believe the modify for freeze transform and center pivot. And that's it. That's all That's all there is to it. It's a long process. Um, and there's a million ways to get here that don't involve using your iPad or um, any special apps. But this is just one way that I like to do it. And um, it's especially useful for organic things like characters, um, bodies, and stuff like that. But you can also do it for clothing. So this is a... This is my final product here, and then I'm gonna use that when I have my boy character and rig it along with the boy character and everything. So uh, thank you guys for sticking along with me. I know it was tedious, but once you get used to it, it goes much faster and you get some really cool results. So um, I hope to see you guys in my next video and uh, let me know if you have any questions or wanna see anything else. All right, bye-bye. Just one quick note, I added some extra lights and that will brighten up the whites in the shoe. Um, so if you just wanna add uh, some intensity to your lights, um, you can pump that up. I added, made this one too um, for my directional light. And then if I render it out, you'll see that the white comes out more what I was going for. So yeah, that looks good. And obviously you don't need two sky domes. That's crazy. Um, I was just messing around. You can just up the intensity for one of them and definitely up the intensity for your directional light. All right.